Mm. I love tea. You know, I recently noticed I love tea. But how about I give you my tea first? Because I know you also like tea. And this, this is juicy and sweet. So now, I'm at home with my baby. The joy is everywhere. It's so overwhelming. My fiance is there to support me, but his paternal leave is over and I have to face this thing alone at home. Every single day you have to wake up and think of how you're going to bring up your child. Every day you have to wake up and think of how you're going to make this happen. Every day you have to wake up and think of how strong you have to be again. And it wasn't the easiest journey ever because this is where people have depression. That's what they call postpartum depression after giving that. But the, the difference comes in where someone can have depression, but you can either decide to live in that depression or find something to get you out of that depression. But for my sake or for my case, I wasn't depressed. I was just stressed. I found myself trying so hard to do things that are above me. I found myself trying to do things just to make other people happy. Oh, you want to come see the baby? Yeah, you can come. My baby was actually barely a month. But I wanted to make them happy because I wanted company. I wanted people to be there for me because at this vulnerable point or time, I needed people to actually just hold my hand and give you that affirmation of, hey, you're going to ace this motherhood. You're going to to be strong you're going to make it but apparently this is the moment i felt alone the most loneliest person oh yes lonely at the top mm, lonely 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 but i didn't have money apparently so <sighs> what was on my mind was how i'm going to take care of my baby and having doing this was the toughest thing ever because my guy gone, uh, he, he has to work to provide. And practically, I'm at home alone. And you have to change the diapers. You have to breastfeed the baby. Do you know how much energy it takes to breastfeed a day? Like, it's so tiresome. It's equivalent to somebody who's actually working white collar job or non-white collar job. It's equivalent to that. But every time my guy went outside, I used to feel like he has all the freedom. And yet I don't have that freedom. So anytime he would come back home, it could be chaos. I'm moody. I have an attitude. I just, I just, I just want to bash things out. But at the same time, I want him to be there. At the same time, I want or expect something out of him. And literally, even if he tried a hundred percent, it seems like I expected 150 plus. Because my mind shifted. And the moment I got this baby, I knew I am going to have him by my side. But apparently, life has to go on. He has to do his work. So this is where stress comes in. You wake up every day, you have to change diapers. You wake up every day, you have to change this little human being. You wake up every day, you have to feed this little human being. And this human being doesn't care if you've eaten or not. This human being doesn't care if you're tired or not. This human being doesn't want to know if you're going to sleep or not. She needs to eat. She needs to be changed. She needs to be pampered. She needs to be given that love that a baby needs to have. And all this, they were just overwhelming to me because being a first-time mom, I expected something easier, but it wasn't. Um, uh, I have I have this history of actually taking care of my sister's baby, but I thought it was going to be the same, though it was the, the most different thing ever because I took care of my sister's baby the way she wanted me to take care of her. But having my own baby, I had to come up with my own way of taking care of my baby. So I think it was just hard. <clears throat> I didn't expect all that. But though, it had to happen. So I was stressed day in, day out. And at some point, I actually felt like I'm going to be depressed. And so I started finding solace in my friends. Of which, I had friends whom I'm going to say... They were just there for my baby or rather they just expected to see my baby then after they've seen my baby they're gonna check out of my life so the first few months i had friends who actually even promised on how they're going to 
to bring gifts. I had friends who were gonna say, um, who said actually, I have gifts for her. I already bought something for her. I already did this for her. But five months down the line, I haven't seen them anywhere. They haven't been seen anywhere, like literally. So finding solace in them actually meant I had to call them or rather text them every time because I can't, I can't actually call my guy because he's always occupied and his type of work is He's only free for like 10 or 15 minutes then back to work and the worst thing about it and his type of work is like he's only free for like 10 or 15 minutes so you actually can't even call or rather you don't even know the time that he's free because his work varies depending on the school he's teaching so yeah i had to find solace in them but at some point i felt like i was a bad <laughs> Mind you, when I was heavy, I used to go visit my friends. Oh, these friends of mine call and they're like, I need your help, I need your company, I need this. And I used to be there for them every damn time. You call me, tell me, I want you because my brother has this. Oh, my family has this. Oh, you know, I need your help on this. I need your advice with this. And I would come through for them every single time. Now, I had this baby. Okay, it's fine. You don't have expectations. But I did have expectations with them because... They were like my closest people. So I was like, would you come see me today? Would you do this for me? Would you take me to this place? Would you do? But every single time I would ask them to do something, they would come up with an excuse. You know, I had this to do. You know, I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to come on Monday. Then apparently Monday arrives or Monday reaches. And they're like, I'm so occupied. I'm actually using a good word. They're like, I am so busy. So at some point I felt like, I'm literally losing them. They're not even there for me. You know, I, I read somewhere that says toxic is not when somebody treats you bad. Toxic is actually when you're actually good to this person, but they give you different types of vibes. They're good to you one day. They're bad to you the other day. So the only option that you have is to decide whether you're going to leave or you're going to stay. And in my case of friendship, I've always been this person who's going to be there for you. I'm going to be down for you if I have money or not. But I think I've had friends who literally are so materialistic. I am not apologetic for this because I've sat down and just analyzed myself through this phase that I had of stress and almost being depressed. My friends are just making some empty promises. I mean, yeah, I'm going to be there. We're going to love this baby. We're going to take care of this baby. Oh, but it reached a point that I felt they they looked at me or rather they viewed me as a mom. And they actually got me out of the age group of saying, oh, you're still a girl. So I had to like deal with my own motherhood and all that. And still, I was still there for them, even with my baby. I would still call and check up, you know. I would still ask them, what are you doing? What's up with you? We can meet somewhere. We're going to do this. And apparently, every time I say that, they would still make promises. It's not one or two. We have friends who actually, I had friends who actually, we've planned a lot. We've planned a lot and it never happened because they're busy. So bearing on my side, I would create time even on my most occupied day with my baby, changing diapers, having headaches, having so much pain in my back. But they would not create even like five minutes to just call and ask how you're doing. And the worst thing about this is that every person that was my friend then just wanted to know how the baby was doing. People rarely look after the mother. People rarely ask you, what about you? How are you doing? How are you faring? How are you feeling? How is your body right now? Do you feel like eating? Do you feel like doing this? They rarely do that. And the moment they do it once, they feel like it's enough. I don't need to push myself too much because I'm actually busy. Hmm. So just losing myself, not knowing what to do, all the stress wondering if I'm going to be a good mom, then having friends whom at my point, it just felt like they weren't there at all. They were there on certain occasions, but that's when you're in dire need of their help. They were there because they want to see the baby. Well, actually, if the baby is pretty or not, they were there because 
they wanted to just give you some lied or rather lied statements some lies oh we're going to give you this we're going to do this we're going to do this you know, just to, to close up your eyes and make you feel oh yeah they're gonna bring me gifts but they never did that so days passed by and i'm still with my baby and i had to come to terms that you know what i don't need you actually my guy is going to work he still comes back he still has time for us it's been a very long time that my guy just tells me okay fine i'm out of work but you sit I'm going to cook. I'm going to change the baby. You can relax. Sometimes he takes the baby out or rather they just do the baby. I have my own time. And I felt like that's enough that I needed because at this point, I really needed peace than hypocrisy in my life. And all I've seen is full hypocrisy from the word go. Because when I was heavy, they still made lies. When I got a baby, they still made lies. So what makes you think when my baby is grown into somebody useful in the society, they won't still make lies? Just doesn't tied up. But either way, my tea actually needs some more sugar. So let me add some.